Hi everyone, my name is Luke Tucker. I am the Head of Consumer Marketing for APAC and EMEA at City. Thank you for joining us today for this vital discussion on DE&I here at Advertising Week. I'm excited to speak alongside our good partners at Getty Images to explore authentic visual storytelling at a time where cultural transparency and advertising is not only important, but it's also necessary to connect with our consumers. Our goal today is to introduce you to a free global tool we've created in partnership with Getty Images called the Diversity, Equity and Inclusion Imagery Toolkit. The toolkit explores the nuances of DE&I across 10 global markets and offers guidance on how to embed these learnings into your creative work. As we're talking about imagery, it made sense for us to partner with Getty Images, the leading global, global imagery company that provides stock and custom assets for organizations. In just a few moments, Yuri Endo from Getty Images will walk you through the highlights of the DE&I imagery toolkits to help, you, to help equip you with real market insights and tangible ways to drive authentic and multifaceted depictions of people in your marketing, communications, and creative work. The work started with City's global marketing team who looked at creative assets and communication from across the globe and through their work, they saw a universal opportunity to be more expansive in how we're defining diversity, but how to be also more inclusive in our imagery. So we're partnered with Getty, imagery, Getty Images and also the research firm Cantar to take a deep dive into the local landscape of our major markets, covering population makeup, trends in imagery, areas of diversity that are often missing in imagery, and opportunities to combat stereotypes to drive more inclusive representation. To create change, we're hosting workshops internally at City and externally like our session today to demonstrate how to leverage the DEI imagery toolkit and use its actual insights to be more inclusive marketers. At the bottom of the screen, you'll see a QR code and link where you can download the DEI imagery toolkits for the different markets. We launched the US toolkit in October of last year. In the last few months, we've launched Singapore, the UAE and Hong Kong toolkits. We're building, we're building toolkits in 10 markets across the Americas, APAC and EMEA because diversity in Singapore is not necessarily the same as diversity in the US, nor is it the same as diversity in say Abu Dhabi. The toolkit doesn't necessarily have all of the answers. Instead, it should serve as a roadmap to guide us to incorporate authentic and multifaceted depictions of people in advertising, marketing, communications and creative assets, while also identifying biases and stereotypes through specific lenses of, lenses of identity. To share some of these learnings and actionable insights with you from our APAC toolkits, I'd like to introduce you to Yuri Endo, Manager of Creative Insights APAC at Getty Images. Welcome, Yuri. Thank you, Luke. Um, hi, everyone. My name is Yuri Endo, Manager of Creative Insights for Asia Pacific at Getty Images. So at Get Images, we believe images have the power to move the world. And we believe that if you change the image, you change the perception of people. So there have been so many examples on the positive impact an image can have. That's why we today, we, um, we want to equip you with better visual choices because we understand the impact of those choices in the wider world. So for today's workshop focus, um, we will do a deep dive on why brands should care about inclusive visual storytelling and what real inclusivity means and how it looks. And finally, give you uh, some insights on how you can drive authentic representation in media and advertising creative. The goal is, here is to show people authentically and inclusively. So why diversity, equity, and inclusion important for brands? So this is a question we receive from brands and we always answer with insights from our visual GPS research to really provide a framework to understand the opportunities and impact that inclusive creative, inclusive creative can. With four out of five people in APAC making decisions on what company products or services to use, going by the visuals they see, it has never been more important to know how to select and create uh, visual content that matches your customer's aspiration and values. DEI is at the forefront of many brands and businesses' visual strategy, yet only 30% of people in APEC said they see diversity in advertisements um, by brands they purchase from. 
And when it comes to imagery showcasing people, we've seen a natural tendency toward what is known. While familiar visuals may convey the messages of diversity, they may also contain stereotypes, um, such as men shown in leadership positions, also women depicted as homemakers, um, people with larger bodies shown dieting, and um, senior depicted as receiving care. But um, consumers are no longer connecting to those visual stereotypes. A counter study also found that imagery that is inclusive and challenges stereotypes is more effective with consumers um, and has a longer lasting impact on them. So inclusive visuals not only promote acceptance and understanding, but also build trust with consumers. So it is also important to consider the role of our unconscious bias and check not only who are we featuring, but how are we featuring them. Our visual GPS research shows that four in five consumers across the Asia Pacific agreed that it isn't enough to have people of various ethnicities, backgrounds, and appearances in advertising and media. So companies need to do a better job at capturing people's true lifestyles and cultures. So what does this tell us? So it's not just about featuring certain types of people, but about how we are visualizing them, how we reflect their true selves and lifestyles. Also globally, only one in 10 feel that diversity is accurately represented in the advertising and media they see every day. So moreover, in Asia Pacific, one in two feel that the media and advertising do not reflect people like them, people they can relate to or their lifestyles. So this indicates that the majority of people can't connect themselves to the visual they see every day. Additionally, uh, our visual GPS research shows that three in five Asia Pacific consumers feel that they have encountered bias. And top three biases felt in APAC are body type, age, and socioeconomic status. We have been tracking how bias drives inclusion and found that people who have encountered biases are more open to seeing inclusivity, not only in real life, but also in media and advertising. So these findings make it critical as we recognize how diverse and multidimensional multi each culture and its people are. Analysis from Getty Images' most popular visuals downloaded in APAC in the past year shows that um, we all get into overuse of simplified cultural backgrounds and unified lifestyles and beauty standards. So having three-dimensional characters visually represented in stories allows for compelling stories originating from diverse cultural backgrounds in each region, also uh, promoting a better understanding of others and therefore acceptance of them. So with that, i um, turn it over to Luke to discuss how we thought about showcasing inclusivity in our DENI imager toolkit. Thanks, Yuri. When thinking about inclusion, we were wondering how we can define and showcase this in an easy way. We know diversity is a buzzword that means different things to different people. So we wanted to narrow it down to a universal definition. Through this work, we defined eight lenses of identity covering race and ethnicity, race and ethnicity gender, age, sexual orientation, disability, bodies, religion, and socioeconomic status to show the breadth of what diversity means and the lenses that each of us possess. But by defining these lenses of identity and working with Getty Images, we were able to, we were able to understand global imagery gaps across all of these lenses to build out actionable insights for marketers to see image gaps. Through these image gaps, we learned that certain visual stereotypes often persist in representing each of the aspects of the identity. So we created inclusivity questions that teens can ask themselves in order to show more diversity in their work. Before we dive into the exclusivity questions, Yuri will take us through some of the common global visual stereotypes and imagery gaps to help us understand some of the areas of opportunities to be more inclusive. Thank you, Luke. So um, let's start with um, discussing age. So there are differences um, between the region, but the, the aged population is currently at its highest level in human history. So in terms of the older generation, 10% um, of our popular visuals used in APAC feature 60 plus year old. So they're less portrayed as active adults um, pursuing, pursuing their 
own interests are working and most frequently shown in healthcare setting as care receiver or often with their family. So this picture here shows the different side of senior lifestyle and um, moving away from medical settings um, without them being portrayed as being cared for. In popular visuals, um, young adults are the most represented, um, accounting close to 50% of overall visuals for APAC, and over 50% are seen as working in corporate environment. So this picture here, this is actually a rather um, inclusive environment where workers are allowed to choose um, between remote or office work. And you can see in the TV screen, um, everybody's joining from different places. Now, moving on to bodies, um, when looking at our most popular visuals, um, less than 1% of the visuals represent body positivity and larger bodies are rarely represented. So when larger bodies are represented, it is women that are depicted the most and are seen on dieting or working out. So aesthetically, um, Eurocentric beauty standards are preferred, uh, most notably lighter skin complexion, also slim and uh, tall people are preferred. And when um, people with darker skin complexions are visualized, they are mostly depicted as working class. So this visual here shows how active self-care can be incorporated into everyday lifestyle of a woman who has a realistic body type. Looking at the makeup of gender representation in our popular visuals, uh, women are most almost twice more visualized than men, but the traditional male and female stereotypes are depicted, uh, such as men at work and leadership roles or women as caregivers and with children. So this visual here is a great representation of a Singaporean um, Indian mother um, who's leading an active um, work-life balance, and um, that suggests that there are many ways to represent modern work-life balance for women. Less than 1% of our popular visuals from APAC represent LGBTQ plus identities. Our research also looked at how the LGBTQ plus community is visualized, uh, which demonstrated a, a link between representation and bias. So in particular, how um, countries with greater frequency of representation tend to exhibit less bias among the LGBTQ plus community. So when they're seen authentically, groups feel more accepted and no longer feel marginalized. So this visual here portrays a man from the LGBTQ plus community cooking with his mother. And um, it's going beyond the fact that he's a gay man. The focus is on the aspects of his intersecting identity, such as him being a son and also an avid cook. When looking at our most popular visuals, uh, less than 1% of the visuals show people with disabilities for APAC. So when they're visualized, images tend to focus on aging care and the physical disability. So outside of sports and the healthcare settings, a wide range of lived everyday experiences um, are rarely represented. So the visual here takes a great approach to show the daily moments of people with disability. The focus is not on her disability itself, but how she works and uses technology in real life. Now let's move on to race and ethnicity. So looking at our most popular visuals from APAC, we found that Caucasian people, Chinese, uh, Japanese people, and Thai people are the most visualized, followed by Indian people. And the remaining parts composed of ethnic communities are rarely visualized. So as for the cultures, um, also tradition and other hugely influential cultural celebrations, less than 10% of visuals uh, depict um, those cultural specificities for each region and uh, nuanced depictions of regional identities, uh, traditions, food, mannerism, and stylings are missing. Now that you've learned some of the gaps and understanding the lenses of identity, we want to equip you with some inclusivity questions that you can ask yourselves to help drive authentic representation of people in your own work. So when representing age, what's missing visually? So we have looked at what we have and looked at what is happening in APAC, and um, these are checklists and the opportunities to portray age more inclusively. 
So are you focusing on a person's whole identity? Are you showing adults of all ages as capable and competent, com competent in everyday life instead of being cared for? So for example, visualizing women in business and leadership across all ages is very important, but this visual, we also have a further intersection where the women featured here is 60 plus years old. Um, it's, it's an age range that we see less um, leading the meeting and also being shown as fulfilled and happy compared to the younger generations. Are you representing a multidimensional experience of what it means to be an older person? So focusing on what they can do and not just what they can't do. So you often see the older generation leading a gentle lifestyle, such as walking or, or spending time with uh, family at home. But this visual here, um, he's focusing on his strength and working out properly at the gym. Are you def defaulting to certain scenarios for certain age groups? So looking at the evolution of the subject, um, Gen Zers and uh, millennials will make up half of APAC consumers by 2025. So also the, on the professional background, there has been a diversification of profession outside of office work, such as gig economy workers, um, influencers, esports athletes, and um, activists and so on. So are you showing varied business setting for younger adults outside um, corporate business setting. Have you considered the intersection of gender and different body types? So are you selecting imagery that features people with different body types living full lives? Are you representing people with larger bodies, not only women? Also, are you including positive um, representation of men with larger bodies? Are you taking into account several aspects of one's body, including hair, skin color, um, shape, uh, complexion, um, height, and so on? So in Asia Pacific in general, skin color creates firm lines of divisions between socioeconomic statuses. So according to a study conducted by WHO, um, nearly 40% of women polled in nations across APAC regularly use products for light lightening their skin. Those are the products that can be a health hazard. So let's start thinking about representing people with different skin tones in everyday life and at work. Also Asian people with non Eurocentric facial features and natural hair textures in everyday life and at work. Are you considering images that help counter gender reinforcing stereotypes. So as I have mentioned, um, women are seen less in business leadership roles and even less in manufacturing or engineering um, plans. So here we also have a further intersection where the woman here is leading a team of firefighters, which is traditionally represented by men. Are the roles depicted in the imagery you choose equally attributable to women and men? So for example, when choosing visuals, have you considered who the caregiver is or um, who is featured in a, in a role of power? Uh, what are the activities in which they are engaged in? So this is a very nice visual of a father and also an uncle um, um, taking care of a baby. Um, this is something that we often um, attribute more for mothers and women to do. When focusing on children, um, are you cons conscious of stereotypes related to their perceived gender? So in fact, children studying is what is most visualized in APAC for both um, girls and boys. But when um, they are seen playing or doing sports, girls are doing less active exercises such as stretching or you know, gently playing, as opposed to boys uh, for doing more active um, action-oriented sports. Are you only showing LGBTQ plus people in romantic stories or as parents? So what about non-partnered LGBTQ plus people living full lives? Are you showing them as individual at work, at home, or traveling? Moving beyond pride, um, are you showing LGBTQ plus people living fulfilling positive lives and having shared experiences both within and also outside of their communities? 
are you representing people who are trans, people with different gender expressions, people who move fluently through different identities and lived experiences within the LGBTQ plus community? Have you considered the camera angle? So camera angle is extremely important to think about when portraying people with disability. So as a team, um, we have done a lot of work with a number of disability organizations. And um, what often um, comes up is um, where the photographer stands. And often the photographer is somebody who does not have a disability and would loom over um, and be looking down at the person um, they are taking the visuals of. So it is really important to think um, about where the visuals um, is being taken and what perception it is given to you. So between the viewer and the person being featured, does the power dynamic look equal? Are you focusing on the person's whole identity? Are you showing the whole range of life experiences and relationship that person with disability may have? So we often see visuals where it is zoomed in specifically on the disability they have, rather than looking at what they're actually doing in the image. So taking this visual here, for example, um, although you can clearly see this um, person has a disability, the focus is about him as an artist, but ab not about his disability. Are you representing multi, multiple intersections of identity, such as race, ethnicity, um, body type, gender identity, or expression, age, and so on? So here we have a man with a disability. He is also Japanese ethnicity, and it's really um, nice to see a moment of him going about his working day. Are you showing a person's ethnicity alongside other intersections of their identity? So what do you understand about the historic depiction of certain ethnicities? Uh, what are you doing to actively challenge um, those stereotypes? What has typically been seen and therefore how can you change perceptions? So in this visual, you see a hearing impaired East Asian woman who is also from the LGBTQ plus community and teaching sign language online. Are you tokenizing or are you humanizing? So it's important to ask yourselves questions about how fully realized are the stories of the people you include in the visuals you choose and also the, the campaigns you're concepting. And lastly, are you taking an expansive view of the dimensions and depth um, possible for people you feature? So are, you feature, are, are they featured in a variety of roles and professions and also displaying a variety of hobbies and interests? So with that, um, I'll pass it back to Luke. Thank you, Yuri, for taking us through those insights and to all of you for attending today's DNI imagery workshop. We hope you can use these insights to select more diverse and inclusive imagery in your work. On the screen, you'll see the QR code and a link to download the DEI imagery toolkits. Thanks again.